Welcome to All Set for Sunday, a podcast for busy and distracted Catholics to be a little more prepared for Sunday Mass. My name is Scott Williams. My co-host is Jeff Trailer. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Scott. Ready for vacation? Yes, I am. I'm getting ready to head on vacation. Yeah? Yeah. Where are you headed to? Uh, South Florida. Lovely. Miami? Not all the way to Miami. Mm-hmm. Fort Myers area. Key West? Yeah. Uh, cool. Father Tim Wichiscala, how are you? Good to be back. Good. Glad so, you're going somewhere for spring break. Jeff, Scott, are you going anywhere for spring break? I'm not. We went to Great Wolf Lodge a couple of weeks ago uh, for just like a quick weekend trip. Did you see the wolves? Oh! Do they have an actual... Do they they like keep a wolf in a cage there? Uh, they've got like people in costumes, oh. which is like a cage of emotion. But yeah, that, other that than is, that... That's fair. Yeah. Uh, and both of you guys are feeling great today, huh? Yeah. Little That's under the right. weather. My apologies for scratchy voice or coughing. Everyone, yeah, I would have, I would have been in there as well, but I didn't want to give you what I think is the flu. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm, here at home. I'm here at home. We appreciate that. I feel great. So good. Well, I'm sure um, Jeff will cough on you and ruin that. Yeah, you said that little birdie Enza. Is that what you were talking about? <laughs> Influenza. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. Well, this might be a shorter episode than most, which. That's fine, but ironic too, considering I know, how long because, the gospel is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, we're compensating for how long mass is going to be for you guys. It's, yeah. We're trying to make up for it for everyone. Um, is Jeff going to read the entire passion from Mark? No, we're all going to take a part. We'll mm-hmm. give we'll give you some parts. We'll give you one that you don't normally have. So <laughs> it'll be it'll be fun. We'll mix it up for you. Um, cool. Did you not look? <laughs> No, I knew, I knew it was the passion. I just you know how Palm Sunday goes. I just, didn't know, there? I just didn't know I was going to have a, a part. No, we're not. We're going to skip it. Um, all right. I think people have heard it. At this point, if you haven't, pay attention when you're a mass this week for the first time. We'll link it It'll in the show busy. notes. Yeah, it'll be. <laughs> we'll link the show notes. Um, no, it's Palm Sunday, uh, the beginning of the gauntlet uh, for our, our priests and pastors here. They got quite the run happening over the next... Uh, seven, eight days um, coming from Palm Sunday. But Palm Sunday, uh, we get an antiphone, right? Like we get Palm Sunday really lays it out. So we get a gospel antiphone in Matthew. Uh, Jesus is cursing a fig tree for not bearing fruit. And it symbolizes the consequences of spiritual barrenness and hypocrisy that we uh, we encounter. So uh, that's Matthew 21, 9. Um, and then... Uh, We get a gospel then at the opening procession. Uh, So, Father, is that that's traditionally read by a deacon if they're there? If they're there, yeah, yeah, just like a you know like a normal gospel, yeah. If there's a deacon, so you have two choices. Do you know which one you're doing yet? We are doing John's. John's one of the choices. Got it. Uh, So in John, just just like I make my deacon swear. John 12, 12 to 16 says, Talk about asses. John narrates, he narrates the jubilant scene of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem with the crowds waving palm branches, proclaiming him king of Israel. Um, does it, does it talk? Oh, yeah. yeah Jesus a, found, a cult, found an cult. ass. What? It says ass's colt there. Yeah. Seated upon an ass's colt. There you go. So, a lot of, a lot of ass in the Gospel of John this week, but, um, and then we go to the responsorial psalm. Our responsorial psalm: "My God, My God, Why have you abandoned me?" Maybe the banger of all bangers. What about the first reading? Oh, do we skip the first yeah, reading yeah, already? Yeah. Good Lord, that's all right. Sorry, it's confusing this week. Our first reading comes from Isaiah fifty-four, uh, chapter fifty, verses four through seven. So Isaiah portrays a suffering servant who remains obedient, steadfast, despite facing adversity and opposition, and he embodies Jesus' sacrificial mission. So he's showing us this embodiment of what that mission will be. Then we get, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? This, okay, so I have very specific memories growing up. Banger memories? Yes, of the passion, like... At when I was growing up at St. Luke, uh-huh. there was this wonderful parishioner who was a musician. I won't say his name because I think he's still a, a musician, but he would get in there and like the way he sang this psalm is like what always makes me think of like it 
it's the image I get when you talk about like somebody singing the psalm and just really going at it. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was like full body emotion. Like he was mm-hmm. moving around and just like really getting deep and like whispery even in there. Like, oh, yeah, it was very, very exciting stuff. I'm sure any former uh, St. Luke prisoners out there would know exactly what I'm talking about, but pretty exciting. Did they also sing, did they also sing, were you there? Did he also get really into that? Yes. Yes, he did. <laughs> he would also uh, play thunder and lightning on his keyboard during uh, the passion. It was, yeah, mm. very, it was like a fire at the circus. Intense. <laughs> <laughs> our second <laughs> reading then, um, uh, our second reading comes from Philippians. Father Tim didn't get your joke. He might have. I think he got it. He no, just, I I, yeah, just did not listen to me. I said I it was like, fire, I, like I, a I fire at the circus. <laughs> it's intense. A fire at the circus. Intense. Oh, <laughs> you were a little good. slow Keep on the going. uptake today. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, and it's always it's always a good joke when you have to repeat it four times. Uh, Philippians <laughs> chapter two six to eleven is our second reading. Paul describes Christ's humanity and exaltation willing to empty himself, become obedient to death on the cross, leading to the ultimate glorification of our Lord. Um, And then we have our gospel. So our gospel reading is uh, Mark's passion. We're not going to read the whole thing. So that would be, what a miserable podcast to have to listen to us all sick, just stumble over this and, Mm -hmm. and, and struggle through it. But if you haven't heard it, I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Go listen to it or read it on your own. But it's uh, Mark chapter 14, 1 through 15 and 47. So there we did it. Great. Uh, Did Jeff get anything wrong, Father? No, he did a good job. As he said, there are two options for the gospel at the beginning, John's and I think Matthew's, which tells the story of the triumphant entry into Jerusalem with palms. Um, have either of you ever seen Jesus Christ Superstar? I always think of the I don't think I have when he comes in and hey, Zana, ho, Zana, Zana, and they wave the palms. I think of that every yeah. time, but anyways, that's of course at, at most churches, you either do that in the narthex or like here at St. Mark. If it's nice outside, we'll do it out front, and then everybody processes in. Uh, which is, of course, what's cool about it is the contrast of the triumphant entry into Jerusalem and then their passion narrative when. Right after that, from from being their king to being a criminal that they want to crucify. Mm. Uh, Mark's passion, just like Mark's gospel, is the shortest of all of them, shortest of the four. Um, Mark has a way of just sort of going from point to point, being pretty concise. Uh, So some of the details that you're used to hearing, uh, you might notice you won't hear this time. It's just kind of the the straight narrative. but it is your B. So we do marks and it's, there's, of course, there's always plenty there with the passion. I kind of like the thing with Palm Sunday or passion Sunday is it's technically called the thing with it is it a homily is, you know, the gospel is it's not only so long, but it's such a powerful moment that you really don't want to preach a big, long homily. So typically I keep the homily very short and I like to end it with silence. Just let's just sit in silence for a bit and stand in awe of what Christ did for us, um, you know, to be able to lay down our, you know, not only our sins, but our anxieties and troubles at the cross, to be able to just take a moment to thank him for, you know, for his sacrifice, for defeating death. I mean, there's there's not too, too much that you could say in a homily that, you know, that is more, you know, that would be able to capture everything that's going on. So, and everybody yeah, is touched. That. Yeah, everybody's touched by a different part of the passion anyways. So just to kind of, you know, remind people of how important what we just read is and how, you know, how central to our faith it is and what it means and then just sit for a moment in silence. I Yeah, I think it would be a misfire to preach this week and be like, here's a story from my life that connects to these readings. (laughs) Or like an anecdotal story or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. As so, you get up there and you're like, but I got the flu last week. So this so is, I, I too so I understand so. this. Yeah, I too. <laughs> It is. Yeah. You know, and it, there's actually even an option for Palm Sunday and good Friday in the lectionary that you can skip the first reading in the Psalm and the second reading. You can go straight into the passion just to show how important it is. Um, and we don't do that, but I think, you know, just to show that this is, it's of course we do this twice a year on on 
on Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, and then Good Friday. And Palm Sunday is Matthew, Mark, and Luke that rotate. Good Friday is always John. Um, so hopefully your listeners will get to hear, you know, hear both Mark's and John's. I really think if there are any, uh, if there is any time of the year where you really just go all in with the faith, it's Holy Week. You're able yeah. to come Thursday evening for Holy Thursday, Friday, usually around three for Good Friday and the Easter Vigil. I can't recommend it enough. It's like the Super Bowl of our faith. Is there a time when you were growing up where like, the holy week kind of took on a new meaning or really hit you in a different way or has it always been a really important thing in your life yeah so i went to catholic grade school and catholic high school so we always did a lot during holy week is like Mm -hmm. it wasn't like a big academic week you know we had like living stations at saint barnabas and right um, things like that you know what i think was one of the coolest things for me was the first time that i actually and i can't it had to have been in college the first time that I actually went to the 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 um, service of the cross on Good Friday, because mm. in, in grade school and high school we had a Good Friday something like in, it was either Living Stations or at Roncalli it'd be like a uh, some sort of passion play or passion narrative or something like that. But it was never the actual service that happens on Good Friday, the full liturgical service with the priest and everything where you go touch the cross, yeah, or adore the cross. So the adoration of the cross service, the first time I saw that. And like in context with Holy Thursday, the night before in the Easter vigil to see it all as like one big sort of mass, like one big celebration, it, you know, it was really cool. Yeah. And I, not to say there's anything wrong with living stations or things like that, but to be able to actually see that 3 p.m. service, mm-hmm. it's one of the most, you know, along with Palm Sunday, it's one of the most powerful liturgical events that we have each year. I think Good Friday services become one of those areas in the church that like, most people, wherever they've grown up, the the service they will like go to the mats for their service being the greatest experience you could ever yeah. have on a good Friday. Mm-hmm. But I would agree with you. Like the more I started experiencing different options and different things, the more you realize like how robust that that can be. Mm-hmm. But everyone is just so hardcore about like, oh, like we when I was working at Ron Colley, we would fight it that all these kids wanted to leave and go back to their parish to see their good because their good Friday service was just but it was the passion play, right? It was eighth graders doing the passion play, which is beautiful and wonderful and like great that they do. But like you said, father, like that, the, the true liturgical service of the cross, like right. kind of gets overlooked in that world. Yeah. I, and now, uh, you know, nowadays the schools, typically, the Catholic schools at least get out at one so they can all come to the 3 PM service. So mm-hmm. still, I think, I, I think I've shared with you before, Jeff, the there's, I think there's something really beautiful about Holy Thursday. And when I was, um, Father Rick at St. John started doing like this pilgrimage of the altar of repose. And it's like, I think it's like a historical tradition in Rome to go to different churches. Uh, and I think it might have a fancier name than what I just said, but do you know anything about yeah, so the altar is to, 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 for you to say that you lived in Rome, but do you have any point of reference? Yeah. There's, there's kind of two things you're talking about in Rome. The during Lent they have what's called the Station Churches, where every church has a tradition. Each of the forty days, there's a mass set at one of these historic, you know, mm-hmm. very very beautiful churches. And then the Altar of Repose on Holy Thursday. So just as a reminder for anyone or anyone that's never seen it, at the end of Holy Thursday Mass, you take the Eucharist and in, in the ciborium and remove it from the tabernacle and then process it to a different place you know so some churches put it in like like for us we go out of the church and into our gym and have it set up in there other churches might have a chapel or something they take it to then there's the night watch some time to sit with christ you know sort of like the like he asked the disciples to do when he was in the in the garden of gethsemane and then the eucharist is put away so and because of that on good friday as you walk into the church there's no sanctuary lamp There's no, uh, the tabernacle is empty, the altar is bare, but Mm -hmm. uh, those altars of repose, you can go from church to church and see how they have them set up. Yeah. And I, I I think that's one of the most powerful things for me. And when I kind of get, got more and more into the Holy Week thing is I went into the, 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 like the nave of the, the church I was at and just to see the tabernacle doors open, the church empty, the sanctuary candle, not lit. And just this feeling of emptiness, like, and, um, I don't know, that just really hit, hit home for me. 
Good Friday is the only day of the year where mass is not said. The Good Friday service has no Eucharistic prayer. Right. Is this also when, like, there are churches that will, like, I've even been able to be a part of churches that, like, remove statues. They remove icons at this time. Typically, they'll, yeah, they they'll might they'll remove icons, them. but you cover statues. Like, we'll be covering our statues. That that starts at Passion Tide, which is mm-hmm. actually the fifth Sunday, which is this coming Sunday. Yeah. So if you come to St. Mark, the statues all have purple veils on them except for Mm. the main crucifix because we can't reach it. It's too high up, (laughs) but yeah. Could you reach it if you stood on top of the altar? (laughs) I don't think so. It's a new question from my daughter that the eighth graders or the children at St. Mark talk about apparently often. Yeah. Could father reach it? Is father tall enough to touch the cross if he stood on the altar? Yeah. Yeah, Or creative enough to figure out a way to get a purple cloth up there. Yeah. You can do it, father. But you could. I'm sure I could. All right. Anything else? Dumb questions? Yeah. Okay. I've got dumb questions for sure. I got, right. I got one. Go for it. You, you go first. It's an, it, this is not more more dumb question as much as like dumb discussion, but one of those little things that happens on Palm Sunday that I just like, I really look forward to because of watching the chaos that ensues from it. Um, When at least like at a parish where, Everyone comes in, sits down, and then you go outside, right? And you got and you light the fire for Palm Sunday, and everybody's out there, and you do the blessing. Also, the, the fire is the Easter vigil, but you also go out yeah. for Palm Sunday to hold the but palms down. For, for both, for both, you go out, you Field do the trip. blessing, and then you go back in. There's nothing oh. more entertaining at that point than like everyone's seat gets taken, yeah. and like there's no good way to like reserve a seat, and then all of a sudden you have people who were there 30 minutes early. And they come in and somebody's in their seats and nobody wants to say anything. And they're just standing in the aisle, kind of spinning in circles. And I don't know. I mean, you have to see that happening too, right? I Father? saw it. Yeah. And people told me about it. And I was like, this is not that hard. Put a book in your seat. And if it gets taken, go up to the person and say, you're in my seat. Move. <laughs> That's not yeah. that. I mean, people told me that. And I was like, just ask them to move. And they were like, oh, we can't do that. And I was like, well, they can't. <laughs> it's not that. I don't know if they did it on purpose. But if, if there's a book there, then you're perfectly within your rights to say sorry we were sitting here please move no it's the same idea as like people who have the same seat they sit in every week at mass and then if you sit there well that's they, different they come in and they're <laughs> like but yeah. i but what, what, what's happening because like, at that point you didn't take their seat because it's not but at this point yes they literally accidentally took seats it happens here all the time as well you should sit in father's seat it's my seat it. never gets taken i never have to worry about it except by father john well you keep your book there <laughs> that's right uh, you keep your book. <laughs> um, so Jeff mentioned that this this coming week is like a gauntlet, yeah, for priests. Would you would you say that your gauntlet is more to the tone of Ninja Warrior or more towards Total Wipeout? How do you approach this? <laughs> I'm I, I'm not entirely sure what that means. Nin, I'm going to say Ninja Total Wipeout because I'm usually wiped out by the end of it, but it's a good it's a fun week. Palm Sunday, Chrism Mass. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday. After the 10.30 a.m. on Easter Sunday, I'm usually ready to go to my parents and take a nap and then have a big Easter dinner. Nice. You've never seen Total Wipeout? Is that like where they... Oh, that's right. Is that like where they run and get bumped off? By, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. And then uh, and Ninja Warriors, like where they like can climb and yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah. I would die on both those shows. But <laughs> it's more like Total Wipeout. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're more like die to yourself yeah, you know, exactly i would yeah. you can use that in your homily if you want. this year even specifically we come like it's not always massive but in some places it is but you've got saint patrick's day solemnity of saint joseph mm-hmm. right into palm sunday into easter week and the triduum and the vigil like it yeah it's got to wipe you out um it's it. there's a lot going on yeah okay the other thing i have here is uh so So you have deacons, so that affects this a little bit. But this is, I always feel like uh, Palm Sunday gospel reading is also the opportunity for you to like pick who your best readers are and ask them to come up because like when doing the, the, the passion narration, you need like really good people up there. And I feel like it's whether reality or not, it's a good way to perceive like who does father like the best. Well, I would say reader. In a parish where Father Micro managed enough to pick the readers each week, that would be the case. But we have a whole like road, like 
scheduling software slash volunteer that does all that. So I don't know who's doing the readings till I show up. Sure, now, of course, you know. if you have if you have a deacon, there's always the narrator and the priest is always Jesus at the passions. Yeah. Yeah, and you get the easy one. I know. So the narrator does most of the heavy lifting, but yeah. Except for when the priest has to say Eloi, Eloi, Sabachthani. Sometimes you get tongue tied on that. <laughs> but at least you've been practicing it, it sounds like. It's a day, um, day at seminary for that. Okay, here's a yeah, this uh this is a question I've had written down for the last like three weeks and we haven't gotten to it. So I'm excited to ask. What do you ever find yourself like in the world of like celebrating the mass? Are you partial to like certain chalices or patents or like the tools that you use to celebrate? Like, are you partial to certain things? Like you you like to use certain yeah. stuff at a certain time or you really That's just good... like the feel of this or whatever it is? I mean, there are, it, it's nice when you have your own chalice that be like, well, I got a chalice from our archives that my siblings had refurbished uh, for me at my ordination as a gift. So it's like, you know, it's, it's not technically mine. I'm going to give it back uh, when I die to the archives, but it's nice to use that. I like chalices that have a little bit of weight to them because, you know, like if they're super light and then it, you know, then it feels like they'll tip over easily or something, but, uh, and, you know, priests have their preferences on. But I like that your implication was also that if they're super light, you don't realize it. And then you end up just throwing them yeah. in the air. Really. So I'm so strong that I always forget how strong I am. And then they go <laughs> flying up in the air. <laughs> As far as vestments, my preference on vestments is not heavy because I get hot easily. And as Jeff could attest to, I'm often very sweaty at mass because you have three layers on. So I like vestments that are nice and thin and breathe. Um, That's and, why the parish yeah. installed an AC vent just for father. Yeah, exactly. In a fan, uh, especially during the summer. But as far, you know, and I like, I'm kind of OCD, so I like things to match. So like if the main chalice is gold colored, then this, this, in my opinion, the side chalices and even the bowls should be gold colored instead of like silver. And it, that's just a me thing though. But yeah. But I so, feel like you're always using ceramic stuff. We don't have any ceramic. <laughs> <laughs> we do not. I have a oh, trivia good. question for you guys. Ready? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So Holy Week, all, most of the days have names, you know, Passion Sunday or Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday. Yep. What is the, what is the Wednesday of Holy Week called? It has a name. This is a, uh, uh, isn't it the Monday Wednesday? Monday? Ma am I getting that wrong? That's not what I'm thinking. No. Whole, Holy Wednesday. It is called Spy Wednesday. Oh yeah. Uh, I think I'm right though. I need to look this up. So they, yeah, I I, used a different verb for. It. I was gonna say Holy Hump Day is my second guess. Maybe that word means spy or something, Jeff. But it's because, and the reason being is because the gospel reading on the Wednesday of Holy Week is always when Judas is like mm -hmm. looking for or spying for an opportunity to be to betray christ so it's like when he decides to do oh, it it's, i was wrong it's monday thursday oh for holy thursday yeah yeah so there you go there's your trivia for the week spy wednesday the great a sad gospel about judas's decision to betray and spy on christ what a snitch yeah all right <laughs> well that's all the time we got today all hey, right guys. Thank, Thank you for like again. like getting through this with yeah, I'm uh, gonna go, under the weather. I'm gonna go lay in bed now and <laughs> take some take some ibuprofen. Hopefully, get some rest. Yeah, I'm go work all day and then drive to Chattanooga today. I'm just gonna have an awesome day. So, all right, enjoy it. Enjoy See it. you guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.